Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and thank you for joining me in another video about controlling playback in Dorico. So far, we've seen how we can set up expression and percussion maps in Dorico and use them to trigger the relevant changes in your sound library. In this video, we'll learn exactly how musical markings actually connect to an expression map. The language of music notation is rich and complex. And part of that rich complexity comes from the almost limitless number of markings that can be entered into a score that direct performers how to play the dots on the page. Some of these performance markings are universally recognized and playable, and many are relevant only to specific groups or families of instruments. Dorico has an extensive library of playing techniques that can be accessed via a notations panel in write mode, as well as quickly typed using the dedicated Shift P popover. There's an editor for playing techniques found in the library menu. Or with one selected in the score, you can click any of the edit buttons in the playing techniques panel to edit it directly. Playing techniques have numerous editable properties, including what they look like, which can be either text or symbol based, whether they should appear above or below the staff by default, and how to display them when they take effect over a specific duration. As well as these appearance characteristics, it's also possible to set what we call a playback technique for the playing technique. And full marks go to those of you who've noticed that this list of playback techniques is the very same list that we use to create expression map switches. In other words, a playback technique is the way of describing the musical intent of a notational playing technique that can be used in an expression map to trigger the necessary change in a sound library. Let's look at a couple of examples. When we were creating our expression map a couple of videos ago, we used the example of moving between pizzicato and arco. If we look at the pizzicato playing technique, found it in the string category, because it is a technique that only string players can execute, we can see it is a text object with the abbreviation pits dot as the default appearance and has a playback technique of pizzicato. So if we input a pizzicato playing technique into the score, then during playback, when the playhead passes that playing technique, a pizzicato playback technique message is sent to the expression map that's defined in the play mode routing for that instrument track. And if there's a corresponding entry in the expression map, we'll trigger the key switch the sound library uses to swap to the pizzicato technique sound in its preset. At first look, it's a complicated process to get your head around, but really it's just a playing technique in the score sends a playback technique to the expression map which drives a change to the VST instrument. And designing the process in this way means there are real benefits to be had. For example, it works just the same way for glyph-based techniques such as this snap pizzicato. Even though it's a symbol and with different appearances when placed above or below the staff, it can still fire off a playback technique that reaches the expression map in the exact same way. Playback techniques have a few properties of their own, which we can see in the Playback Techniques editor. Again, found in the library menu, but you can also edit the one selected for a playing technique directly from that editor. Actually, I'm gonna talk through the properties from the bottom up. This toggle for attribute or direction is for specifying whether the technique applies only for the note to which the playing technique is attached, i.e. it's an attribute of the note, or persists until a contradictory playback technique is issued, i.e. it's directional. For example, when you see a pits marking in the score, the performer knows they should play pizzicato until such a time that they pass an arco marking. As such, the articulation type for pizzicato is direction. Whereas a snap pizzicato technique is applicable to only the note the symbol is attached to, and so the playback technique articulation type is attribute. 
Now, depending on the sound library you are using, it may or may not have separate sounds for regular pizzicato and snap pizzicato. If a library doesn't have a specific snap pizzicato sound, it'd be better to use the regular pizzicato than to just keep using an arco sound. The fallback property lets us choose another playback technique that we know will be covered by the expression map and sound library so that we get a better approximation of the correct sound. You can specify a group to categorize the playback technique. And continuing with our pizzicato example, the arco playing technique has a bowed playback technique, which we can see is an alias for natural, which means the natural switch will be triggered in the expression map and the preset will revert to its default sound. It's not always playing techniques specifically that result in triggering key switches. For example, slurs issue a legato playback technique, and there are playback techniques for many articulations and ornaments and things like tremolos and glissandos. There are a couple of ways to track playback techniques to see what's in use. In an earlier video, I showed you the playing techniques lane in the key editor that shows you the expression map switches that are in force at any point for a selected instrument. Hovering over this lane displays a readout that includes active techniques, which lists any playback techniques that are prevailing at that point in time. This can be a useful way to investigate problems with your expression map, as there may be combined techniques in effect that are not accounted for. I'll cover combined techniques in a future video. Also, if you select any playing technique in the score, the status bar displays a readout of the playing technique and its associated playback technique. Now, if you're working with a sound library that has a sound for which there is no playback technique already defined, you can just create your own. And then, of course, if there's no suitable playing technique to drive that playback technique, then you can create one of those as well. As long as the chain is complete, playing technique, playback technique, expression map, then you'll get your desired result. You can even hide playing techniques, so you can use them to control your sound libraries without needing them to be visible. In this project, I've loaded sounds from the Spitfire Eric Whittaker Choir Library and routed my Dorico singers to them. In order to take advantage of the different vowel sounds available, I created playback techniques for each one and used them in an expression map to trigger the appropriate sound library change. I then created new playing techniques for each vowel sound, setting the corresponding playback technique. I could then add the playing techniques to the score, which would trigger the relevant changes in my playback mockup, but hide them as they're not necessary for the performers to see. So that's playback techniques in Dorico. We have almost all of the pieces in place now. So in the next video, we're going to look at playback templates and what they are. I do hope you found this video useful. Please click the like button if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell for alerts. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.